So in this video, I'm going to talk about the formation of acetals from aldehydes and ketones and alcohols in the presence of acid. I'm going to start with a generic example here and then move on to some more specific examples. And then I'm going to finish up with a detailed walkthrough of the mechanism. All right, so starting with our ketone now, or aldehyde, and for our purposes, ketones and aldehydes will behave exactly the same way for this reaction. We're going to add an alcohol to this, and, and I'm showing this alcohol as R primed OH, where R primed is, is just some generic carbon group. And we're going to add acid to this, uh, sulfuric acid in this example, H2SO4, but we can add other acids as well. You'll often just see H plus uh, being added here. And the product, if you look carefully, we've formed two new carbon-oxygen single bonds. And we've formed a, a bond between carbon-2, where the carbonyl carbon is, to the oxygen of our alcohol. So two new carbon-oxygen single bonds. And we've also formed a molecule of water. Um, now this species over here is called an acetal. When we've got a, a carbon which is bonded, single bonded to two oxygens, and the oxygen is bound to carbon groups, this is called an acetal. Um, and if you look at the bonds that are broken in this reaction, we're breaking a carbon-oxygen pi bond and a carbon-oxygen single bond. We're ending up forming one molecule of water. So that's where the water comes from. It comes from breaking up this carbonyl oxygen. Okay, so having looked at that generic example, let's go and talk about a little bit more specific examples. Um, just one thing to note is that you'll often not see two equivalents written uh, beside the alcohol like I did above here. Uh, in these reactions, it's often assumed that the alcohol you're adding is actually the solvent. So there's not just two equivalents, there's actually multiple equivalents, thousands of equivalents of alcohol relative to your ketone. So just keep that in mind when you see these, is that you often won't see that two equivalents like I had above. So taking this the simple cyclic ketone called cyclohexanone, we're going to add methanol to this, CH3OH, in the presence of a strong acid, so TSOH, the strong acid similar to H2SO4, and we're going to form our acetal. So carbon oxygen single bonds and of course these come from our methanol and we've driven off water and the water comes from the carbonyl oxygen uh, the oxygen of, of the water comes from the carbonyl oxygen and, and the hydrogens uh, can come from the, the methanol that we've added so fairly straightforward simple example uh, which also works really well for aldehydes so here we start with an aldehyde called benzaldehyde and we're going to add ethanol to this and treating ethanol and, and H plus so a generic acid we end up with our acetal again and the exact same pattern of bonds forming and bonds breaking occurs here too. We're breaking carbon oxygen pi bond and single bond and we're forming two new bonds between the carbon and the oxygen of the alcohol and we're forming water as well. Now this last example is often a little bit problematic for students the first time they see it. So we're going to start with a ketone here and, and instead of adding two equivalents of an alcohol we're actually going to add one equivalent of an alcohol that has two hydroxy groups on it. So this type of alcohol is called a diol, and specifically this, this one is called ethylene glycol. In the presence of a strong acid, H2SO4, uh, what we're going to do is both of these OH groups are going to form bonds with the carbon of the carbonyl, and we're going to form a cyclic acetal. And it, we form a ring here because these oxygens are connected to each other through this carbon chain. So kind of like how if you have a belt, before you fasten it, it's just a straight line, but then when you fasten it together, it becomes a loop or a ring. That's a little bit like what's going on here, is we're forming a, a cyclic species from a linear one because these oxygens are connected to each other through, this, uh, through these two carbons here. Okay, so having looked at these specific examples, let's talk about the mechanism of this reaction. And for a reaction where it doesn't look like very much happens, we're breaking two carbon-oxygen bonds, we're forming two carbon-oxygen bonds, actually quite a bit going on in this mechanism. So let's just walk through it. So we're going to start with our ketone in this case, and we're going to add a strong acid called toxic acid. And this is the structure of toxic acid, except I've unfortunately forgotten to draw a methyl group on the end here. But this is basically the structure of toxic acid. And when we do so, we're going to make our oxygen protonated. So it's going to have a positive charge on it. And if you recall that ketones have a partial positive charge on the carbon, well, well, so that makes them electrophiles. So when we add acid to the oxygen of carbonyl, this is actually going to make that partial positive charge of the carbon even more partially positive. So if carbonyl is a decent electrophile before we add acid, it becomes even better electrophile after we've added acid to it. So it's a little bit like putting our carbonyl in. It's like, an, like acid is a little bit like an aphrodisiac for this ketone and that we're making it a lot more reactive than it normally would be. And we're, we can then add a weak nucleophile 
uh, to our carbonyl carbon, such as ethanol, which might not normally react so, so fast with uh, ordinary ketones, but once we protonated it, this is a much faster reaction. So the bonds that are forming and breaking here in this reaction, which we call addition, or I call it 1-2 addition, but uh, the 1-2 the is not so important. We're forming an oxygen-carbon single bond, and we're breaking the carbon-oxygen pi bond. So uh, those are arrows C and D here. Okay, so having done so and then redrawing everything, we have this product here. And the next step that happens is we're going to shuttle one of our protons over from the blue oxygen to the red oxygen. So our blue oxygen is currently positively charged and our red oxygen is currently neutral. We're going to move a proton over using, I've shown it happening in two steps, sorry, in one step. It's probably a little bit more correct to show it happening in, 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 in two separate steps, but for our purposes, this will just be fine. And we are forming, going from forming OH here to OH2+. Plus. So we've essentially gone from OH to water. This sets up the next reaction, which is, goes through this mechanism we call elimination. Again, I call it 1-2 elimination. The 1-2 isn't so important. But what we're doing here is we're going to reform the carbon-oxygen pi bond, and we're going to displace the carbon-oxygen bond here. And what's key for this reaction is that the acid has taken what was ordinarily a pretty bad leaving group, OH. It would have to be OH minus as a leaving group. And by adding acid, we may allow it to leave as water. So acid has served a second purpose in this reaction, and that it helps to make the OH a better leaving group. So it now leaves as OH2. Okay, so having done this, this elimination reaction, we're back to a situation where we have a positive charge on our oxygen, and our carbonyl is very electrophilic. So in being so, it will react with another equivalent of, of ethanol, and the lone pair comes in here, and this is another example of our addition reaction, or like I called it, one-two addition, we're forming carbon-oxygen, and we're breaking carbon-oxygen pi bond. And this will lead us to, after we've redrawn it, uh, the protonated acetal. So we just have this hydrogen on the, uh, hy um, the oxygen of ethanol to deal with, and this is positively charged. And now we just need to remove it, and then we'll get our neutral acetal. And so here I'm showing OTS minus acting as the base here to remove the proton. Uh, that's because I use toxic acid as our acid, but it's really, um, there's many different things you could use to show uh, as the base in this case. You could also uh, use a, another equivalent of ethanol or you could use water. It's really not crucial exactly which base you show uh, acting here because many things could act as a base. Um, in this specific example, I showed this occurring. Um, so that sort of wraps up the sequence of bonds forming and bonds breaking for this reaction. But again, if you look at what initially kind of seemed like a simple reaction, you know, we're forming two bonds and breaking two bonds, the key bonds anyway, there's actually a lot going on. So six, six kind of bonds are formed, six bond forming events, six bond breaking events, um, a total of 12 arrows in, in total if you, if you add them all up. So it's a very uh, complicated mechanism. But if you sort of look at it from the from uh, as a sequence of, of of individual steps, there's actually um, it's very much easier to handle if you just sort of think of it as a series of individual steps that are all going to repeat themselves all through carbonyl chemistry. Um, so I think that's all I really had to say about the uh, formation of acetals from aldehydes and ketones. But uh, if I've missed something or you have any questions or comments, I really want to invite you to, to leave a comment or a co uh, question below and I'd be happy to answer them um, in the future. Thanks for watching.